In this Debaco University video, the sediment filter and details surrounding that will be covered. Let's go over using a sediment filter for cannabis production. So first off, what is a sediment filter? Let's get start with the basics. The sediment filter captures and removes a particulate matter, such as soil and debris from the water. This can apply to both municipal as well as natural water sources. Flakes of rust can enter your water supply from corroded galvanized plumbing. Rainwater can carry silt, clay, soil, and grains of sand uh, into your um, well groundwater supply. So it's important if you have any of these to be utilizing a sediment filter so you can take out that particulate so you can be left with uh, clean water, at least that looks clean, sediment filters, keep in mind, do not remove any contaminants, only the physical sized particles. So what's the advantage of a sediment filter? Well, sediment filter is the first line of defense against dirt and debris in your irrigation system. This prohibits all um, of the solid particulate from entering your water supply and impeding the performance of your water filtration systems, uh, such as carrying of irrigation pipes, could be wearing out pumps, uh, doing damage to any sort of filters or O-rings down the line. Sediment filter is a great guard against any of that from happening. So how do sediment filters work? Well, sediment filters physically block unwanted particulate matter based on its size. Sediment filters are like a net that catches the particulate matter traveling in the water. So here we see an example here. We have our larger particles, our smaller particles able to pass through. Sediment filter is going to take out those larger clay uh, sand particles in comparison to something really fine like ions. It kind of might look like this in the end, where it looks kind of like it's all encased with uh, soil. Uh, some are uh, more of a paper component, some more of a mesh screen. All of them basically work the same way of filtering out those larger particulate sizes. So what do sediment filters remove? Well, the sediment filters can remove visible particles of matter and any particles of dirt, sand, dust, and debris that can be caught by its micron rated capacity. So sediment filters also remove turbidity from the water as we can see here. So we said, what does sediment filters remove? Well, it depends on what size the sediment filter you have. The smaller the size, the greater amount that it will remove. However, typically also the slower the flow rate. So this is why there are different sizes because it may affect the flow rate or the gallons per minute you're getting through that filter. The, what are the limitations of a sediment filter? Because every filter, again, is has some limitations. And sediment filters do not remove chemicals, heavy metals, bacteria, or dissolved particulate matter. They do not improve the taste or smell of the water. So just be aware if that's what you're looking to remove, sediment filter is not going to be a good option for you. It may produce water that looks uh, clear, and that can be a good thing, but doesn't necessarily remove the chemicals, bacteria, or heavy metals from that water. However, sediment filters are still very common. Sediment filters are the most effective when uh, serving as pre-filters for other filtration systems. They're typically used in conjunction with other filtration methods like reverse osmosis or carbon filtration as well. They're typically the first line of defense to make these filters last longer as well, to take out anything that might be in the irrigation water initially. So what are the different types of sediment filters? This is where we get into some more of the details. There's uh, a couple listed here. Our pleated uh, filters are best suited for large particulate. They're also washable and reusable. Then we have meltdown, uh, melt blown filters, and these are best suited for fine particulates. So it's kind of that different particle size, you want to know what's in your water. Then here, right below me, we have this string wound filters. And once overloaded with sediment, they will pass them through, indicating the need for filter change. But this could cause issues down the line. So keep that in mind that this uh, melt blown filter is great for fine particulate string works great, and then all of a sudden, once it fills, it'll let those particulate goes by, and that can cause some severe issues down the line. Then we also have something called bag filters, which change in micron size between 1 and 200 microns. And then we have a spun down filter designed to remove large size debris from the water as well. So again, depending on what you're trying to remove, will determine what type of sediment filter might be the best option for you to select. So let's just talk about micron size. Well, sediments filters micron rating indicates what size particles the filter will be able to eliminate. For example, a 10 micron filter will remove anything 10 microns and larger. 
The micron size of your sediment filter will vary based upon the respective size of the sediment you are seeking to eliminate from your source. For a reverse osmosis or RO system, a 5 micron sediment pre-filter is typically recommended. And this just kind of shows that relative comparison of microns compared to the average human hair being about 150 and working way down um, here. Uh, just again, give you just a general idea of silver mesh size, the inches and the microns and the typical material that might be removing. So nominal versus absolute filter uh, ratings, kind of something that often uh, is used as interchangeable terms when clearly it is not. Nominal mean or average 5 micron rating means that the filter is designed to capture approximately everything 5 microns and above. An absolute 5 micron rating means that the filter remove uh, over 95% of anything 5 microns in size. So keep that in mind that the nominal versus absolute is also probably going to have a significant price difference. An absolute rated micron filter can ensure specific contaminant is removed from the water source. As a result, that's probably going to uh, you're probably going to pay a little bit more for that type of precision in your filtering method. Then the frequency of filter changes. Everyone wants to know, well, how often do I need to change that filter? Um, and it really depends on many factors. One reliable method is to watch for a water pressure drop. So a lot of times you have your water filter and you'll have a little pressure gauge before and after it. And you want to make sure those gauges are reading the same. If one starts reading a little bit lower, it's a sign it might be time to change that filter. Simply because a filter clogged, which is filled with sediment, will cause a, reduce, a reduced water pressure. So that can be a great easy way to indicate that filter probably is going to need to be changed. However, the general recommendation is to change the filter or at least check it every 6 to 12 months, depending on the flow rate and rating, and also the type of water you have coming into that filter system. Once you have an idea, you can have make note of it, write it down, and you can have an idea of how frequency you will change your filter. But that pressure drop is a great way to know exactly when it's time to check that filter and most likely time to change that filter. So make sure you have an extra on hand.